Okay, now we're up to question five, a short question. Um, and the first thing it's asking us to do is to name the compound. So I think, uh, again, if you're not sure, it helps sometimes to just draw it to get a better idea of what's going on. So we've got a, a nitrogen, we've got a hydrogen attached to it, and we've got two methyl groups. So um, the fact that we've got two methyls means that it's dimethyl. And then the other thing and we have to remember is that if we have a nitrogen bonded to um, a carbon, so nitrogen bonded to a carbon, at least one carbon, then we have got uh, an amine. So that's actually our name, dimethylamine. But like I say, I think it really helps. You know, the fact that you've, I think a lot of you said ethylamine or just got yourselves into a bit of a pickle. But it is really important to notice that we are, they are telling us we have got two methyl groups and they are stuck onto a nitrogen. So really an amine is just ammonia. It is just ammonia, except we've replaced one or more of the hydrogens of ammonia, so ammonia is NH3, one or more of the hydrogens with um, some sort of alkyl group. So, uh, name the type of compound produced when a large excess, that's very important, large excess of CH3Br, and CH3Br is a hal halogen O-alkane. reacts with our amine and give a use of this type of compound. So the large excess is important. Um, basically, when you do a reaction between a halogen or alkane and an amine, you can influence whether you're going to get mostly primary amine or quaternary ammonium salts. It's like the, the, the opposite ends of the possibilities of the products that you can form. And it depends on which substance is in excess. If the halogen or alkane is in excess, then you get the quaternary ammonium salt. If the amine is in excess, you get, uh, or the ammonia is, the, is in excess, or the amine, you're going to get the smallest substituted version that you can, that you would have in the sort of sequence. So um, it's not an amine that we're making, right? First thing to say here, if we have a large excess of, the um, halogen or alkane, it is a quaternary, we'll draw it in a minute to explain it, and then ammonium, it's not an amine, and then um, salt. Okay, so what we would have made in this particular reaction is... that. So we've got our nitrogen with four methyl groups in this particular one. So that's why it's quaternary. And then it's ammonium because of that positive charge. So nitrogen would normally have three covalent bonds, but if it forms four, that means the lone pair has been used in a dative bond. Uh, and that means we have an overall positive charge. So it's like NH3 plus, N plus H, plus, sorry, let's say that again. It's like, if I, you did this when you did data bonding for the first time, you've got ammonia and you add it to H plus and you get the ammonium ion with a data bond. That's how you did it with the data bond. And you add your square brackets and your plus. So one of these bonds in our quaternary ammonium salt it would be defined as a, it doesn't matter which one it is, but it would be defined as a dative bond, okay? Now, uh, you have to remember, I'm afraid, it's a fact, um, like, I mean, it's a thing, it's a fact to learn about um, uh, what quaternary ammonium salts are used for, but they can be used for surf uh, surfactants, for detergents, 
for hair conditioner um, and I'm going to write fabric softener. Okay. Draw the structures of the two compounds formed in the reaction of CH3 and H2 with ethanoic anhydride. So ethanoic anhydride has this structure. All right, and then another way of showing that is to draw it like this. So I'm doing this to remind you. So to relate that to that um, condensed structural formula, this part is this part, okay? And this oxygen here is that oxygen there, okay? So that's how the structures and the condensed formula relate to each other. If we think about the overall reaction equation, so an amine plus ethanoic anhydride they are going to make uh, an amide and uh, amide is when you've got a nitrogen oops sorry bonded to uh, a carbonyl Okay, so that's what uh, that's the amide group there, um, and then um, we would get in this one because it's an ethanoic anhydride we're doing. We would get well, carboxylic acid. I'll talk about that though. So actually, if I'm, I'm if I'm giving a general equation, I should call that the acid anhydride. So apologies. So it's a generic, it's a it's a generic equation, isn't it? Let's just move that together. Okay, so our amide, all right. So uh, we know, let's again take it systematically, our amine is CH3 and H2. So let's draw that, CH3. And then N, and we know that the H, one of the H's stays, and one of them is going to get replaced. And we also know that um, if it's an amide, that's where the carbonyl is. And if we think about where the carbonyl is, it's come from here. What else is attached to that carbonyl? What, what's the thing that we've stuck on? But here it's a CH3. So that's the amide that we've made. And then the carboxylic acid is going to be from the other half of the acid anhydride. So this is the that part, yeah. And then if we think about um, another part of it, that's what we've got left. That's going to be forming the carboxylic acid. So that is our other structure. Now, arguably, that um, that carboxylic acid it depends on on how much um, amine we've got, but you could have a neutralization reaction there, so you could end up actually with a carboxylate ion and um, an ammonium ion. But let's not let's not be too complicated here. Those are two compounds formed in our reaction if we react our methylamine. That's what we've got: methylamine with um, ethanoic anhydride. We would make this amide and this carboxylic acid. And that is probably something that you do probably need to go over. So if you look at the amines video and look at the different uh, reactions, um, that would be that would probably almost certainly be a worthwhile thing to do. But any questions, as always, let me know.